Hey guys, I've got a bit of a different knife on my table tonight. I've been looking for stuff that isn't in the ordinary. So I do a lot of Spyderco, Zero Tolerance, Cold Steel, you know, the main knife guy knife brands. I thought I would look abroad and see what the Italians are making. So this is a Viper Keeper. I've been meaning to review this since I saw a review by the delightful Stephen Schmalhaus. Makes some lovely YouTube reviews with his magnificent uh, accent. Um, I saw Stephen do a video on this a long, long time ago, and ever since I've just been curious about it. It's got some real genuine weirdness going on in it, but it's made by Technocut slash Viper, who have a pretty good reputation for making some pretty excellently fit and finish knives for either other companies or just from themselves. So I pulled the trigger on this one, $200 this cost me in Australia. So that's probably a bit of overseas -y kind of tax, probably in a bit of Italian labor money, you know? And then um, also, I guess it's made of some decent, but not amazing materials. So I'll get into the knife, I'll get into some size comparisons first so we know what we're looking at. So let's crack it open. So first of all, let's look at it next to a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This one's going home tomorrow, back to its owner, but you can see it's about the same size as a Para 2. Maybe a little longer in the blade, certainly longer in the cutting edge, but a little shorter in the handle. Uh, next we'll look at it next to a Hardcore Hardware, MILF number 4. That's like a big chunky bruiser of a knife. Kind of like to looking towards your, your chunky hinderers or even your Medfords maybe, I don't know. Getting towards that ballpark. Um, so that's just those compared spine wise as well. You can see this is a 4.5 millimeter spine. This is a 3.5 or 3.25 millimeter spine that very, very much tapers towards the tip. So this point of the blade here is very much a thin blade. Whereas this blade, whoa big and doofy towards the end as well. Uh, let's look at it next to a Zero Tolerance 0180 fixed blade knife, so it's a little bit shorter than that. And then that's it next to a Australian $2 coin. There we go. And uh, what else do I have lying around here? This is it next to an iPhone 6. The photo of my lovely wife. Uh, very nice. All right, so. Let's do a top to toe overview of what you get here. So starting at that tip, they're very, very delicate little, very sort of pokey pointy tip aided by a swedge and going down into a full flat grind. But that is a very delicate little point for very delicate fine work that very delicately, very delicately already has folded over just enough to feel a bit bearish. Not that it's completely bent or misshapen, you can't really see. I don't know if you can just see like a little bit of shine to it from all angles. It kind of means it's mushroomed or plopped, but that uh, plopped a little bit. You know, plopped, that's a good adjective. Anyway, so that's kind of happened there, and that'll happen with very delicate tips, just under standard use. So what ends up happening is it ends up kind of getting worn down a little bit, probably over a sharpening or two, and then it's, you know, sharp, but not crazy, like, that's like sticky sharp still, even with its little fold or bend. So there you go. Very nice, sort of very sharp little tip. Then drawing back towards the entire blade in general. So let's look at the blade here. You've got a full flat ground blade of about three and a half or 3.75 inches long. So it's a larger knife on the larger side. Uh, it has complete chamfering over the top. One thing you notice about this knife is that they love to chamfer and smooth things. Very nice and smooth along here. No problems at all. And the blade face is kind of like stonewashed or tumbled. Pretty nice finish. You've got the D2 Viper Keeper there, or Keeper Viper there. Um, the D2 obviously being the steel and Viper Keeper being the brand. And those are the maker's marks or the initials or whatnot of the people who designed the knife, who I do not know. They're not my friends. I do not know them. Now, moving down here, you've got quite obvious cross guards that are made from the flipper slash wave opening mechanism and also to pay some sort of homage to the kind of traditional Italian stiletto dagger kind of thing that's going on here. Absolutely. So that's what you get about that far down. And then a reasonably generous sized pivot, not super huge. Not so, It's par paramilitary sized pivot rather than, you know, hardcore hardware sized pivot. But... Um, generous nonetheless. Turning over on the micata handles, which you are seeing in full now, you've got a liner locking system here. Very kind of, again, quite thin, quite delicate seeming, but then it is rather robust and it certainly pops across far enough for the whole liner to be on the blade tang. And again, 
all chamfered and rounded off. So this, these little steel bits are rounded. Then the micarta is rounded as well. Lots of rounding going on. Very, very nice. You've got a sort of a forward finger area here for your index finger. And then that then migrates down the rest of the handle with a second sort of step for your other three or four fingers. Now, looking at the back here, you've got see-through construction with one standoff and then a small um, back spacer there, also made of the stainless steel. And then you've got the pocket clip, which is a very, very deep carry, nice wire clip. A little bit of flex or bend in it, but nothing that has really caused me any problems at all. So there we go. And then coming to the end, you've got like a flat, flat end, very sort of like, you know, Coke bottle-ish or something to it. Pretty cool there as well. So let's close the knife up and I'll show you more about this system here. So seeing there, you can see it's kind of like an uneven flipper style design. This tab here is for wave opening from your pocket and also just forming that stylish guard. And this side here is the blade opening mechanism. So we'll zoom out a little bit and I'll show you what that's all about. So the way to open this blade as described you know, in the official literature and in most other reviews is like this. Start, finish. Start, finish. Now, you can lube this knife up a little bit more and loosen that pivot a little bit and get it to more or less flip open with some pretty decent push button action there, but it is not decisive. It is not how the knife was intended to run. So, this is what you get, and whatever else you can improvise is on you, but it is not intended to be a, you know, super flipper style knife like the rest of the sort of tactical flipper folders are used to. So it's not what you're not what you're getting for your price there. So if you're looking for an amazing Italian flipper, perhaps look at something from Lion Steel or whatnot. This is kind of different again. The general feel of this knife I am feeling is that although it is combat-ish, I think it is a food knife. I think it's that's the best way for it to be used. It's nice and thin, it's got a nice tall high grind, and it has a really, really good blade for slicing food that is very nice and thin behind the edge. And it's because of this, the whole picture, even with this obvious sort of combat-inspired thing, that's all it is, it's combat-inspired. I don't know. Let's go into the review. I'll start off the things with that with what I, I'll start off with the things that I don't like, and I'll migrate towards the things that I like, uh, and give some final thoughts in the end. So, first of all, what I don't like, I was disappointed by this. Just zoom in on that some more. Uh, the blade is not completely centered, and I know that's not rubbing against the sides. It's still off from the scales and whatnot, but. Uh, this company has a little bit of a reputation for excellent fit and finish, and largely, the rest of the knife, with all of its chamfering and finishing, is really well fit and finished. This was just a bit of a bummer to me. So, that's kind of the main thing that stood out to me as like a proper, like, oh, that's no good. And, you know, it's not the end of the world, and it doesn't affect the operation of the knife at all, but I was hoping for a little bit more, um, you know, just that. That would have been nice if it was just there, and not like that. So, that's, that's just one thing there. Um... Overall, just not, you know, the main probable thing about it was just a little bit disappointing for a $200 Italian knife, was hoping for it to be centered. Everything else about it is immaculate. Just that, almost in the, in the face of everything else being so good, just that really kind of was a bit of a blow. But, you know, knife guy stuff, not to worry too much. Secondly, and you're probably seeing it happen now, this mechanism requires a little bit of getting used to, and it's a little bit sort of <laughs> fingery. I don't know. It requires like a little bit extra thought. I'm sure you get used to it. I've been playing with it for a few days now. Yeah, I guess I have probably got used to it a little bit, but it requires sort of more, your hand just more creeping all over the place. And uh, I would probably encourage you just oiling it up, loosening the pivot up a bit. I haven't probably done it to the maximum yet, and just getting it so you can flip it open, or hey, just use your wrist, which I'm struggling to do on camera, but yeah, no worries at all. Slight bit of boost and then the rest, wrist, no worries. Out it comes and that's fine. But it's just a little bit of a, just feels a little bit off, a little bit. I'd rather they either committed to full on flipper or they just drop the wave feature entirely, put a little stud on there and have it just thumb slot open, which you kind of almost can as it is anyway. That's all. Now, again, the wave feature, I'm not saying this is a bad point, but the wave feature, which I'll roll in some footage of me doing now,
Yeah, the wave feature doesn't really do it for me at all. I, I'm not sure why the average knife user wants this feature. Um, I'm not sure. I, I just have, I've got little kids in my house and they're kind of just always hanging around me. Like they come right up to you with the full intention of asking like a really long winded question and they don't get that you're like doing the dishes or, you know, it's doing something else. They come up right behind you, like tug on the back of your shirt, all that sort of stuff. I don't want to be flipping knives at the back, like opening up, like with the blade exposed to the rear while, I've, while I'm just in that kind of environment. That's just me personally, but really don't do much for me. The um, wave type features on knives um, just seems fraught with risk. This one's pretty good in that it doesn't open unless you actually mean it to. It's not as hooky as say the Emerson wave is. So it is a much more deliberate mechanism and I didn't really find it going off at all without intending to do it, but that's just something that doesn't set my world on fire. Another thing that doesn't set my world on fire is these act as little key hooks sometimes, pulling up what else is in your pocket, a little bit of like an anchor, like a little pocket anchor. So. Top of your pockets up here, you've got your, um, you know, what have I got around here? You've got your, um, <laughs> got your paracord knife case in there as well, you know, and it just grabs, <laughs> grabs and, sorry, this is a terrible example. What am I doing? Why don't I just get my keys out of my pockets? But yeah, it grabs onto whatever else is in your pockets and it, yeah, moves it around out of your pocket maybe even when you take it out. And that's, you know, just not something I really appreciate. And I'm always knocking like the American Lawman and the Delicas and all the exposed tang knives for that. And this is kind of like that magnified. So yeah, those are the real bad negatives about it. The things that I really particularly you know, not, not in love with. Now let's talk about things that are actually really good about this knife. For a start, the blade is good. It's really nice, flat, very, very versatile utility blade. It's made of D2 steel, which is stonewashed here. So probably not gonna be the most stain resistant, but Still more stain resistant than say 1095, of course. Um, it's a really good um, edge holding steel for you know median price range. The Europeans I notice aren't particularly bothered about super steels just yet. D2, uh, Slepnir, Nylox, you'll find them in most of these kind of knives. Maybe even N690, which is kind of like a more stainless version of steel with a little bit less edge retention, but you know, obviously more rust resistance. And this knife actually comes in an N690 version as well um, with a uh, wooden handle. So I like this canvas micata for reasons I'll go into soon, but um, you can get it in a sort of uh, black coated, green canvas micata, woods, all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, so two choices, D2 or N690. Um, and the D2 here is absolutely fine. I'm yet to do a rope cut, te cut test with it, but I will soon because I could definitely do with another D2 data point. It is one of those quite variable steels, and I have a feeling that the Italians probably do it rather well. So that's the blade, and it was a really, really nice blade, really nicely finished. Let's move down to the handle. This handle is the most comfortable pocket knife handle I've ever held. It is about perfect. It is comfortable the same way like an LT right knife handle is comfortable. It is nice and neutral, some basic steering, just these very slight steps, and it is round and broomstick-like with micata, which is in a way under, underutilized knife handle material in the pocket knife world, if you ask me. It is almost perfect. I would only say that it is still just a little, and this is just because it's a pocket knife, it is just a little still, you know, channely, and there's a pocket clip and all that sort of thing to make it like up there with, you know, a fixed blade knife handle. But for a pocket knife handle, I don't know how you do much better than this. It is just about perfect. With the added bonus, you can just blast it out when it gets dirty. Um, it's easy enough to take apart. You know, I just cannot speak highly enough of this handle. This knife is a joy to hold and use because of it. Even with this Quillion thing here, they've gone ahead and made it quite round. So resting the joint of your thumb there on it isn't particularly hard. If you are gonna do some more like, you know, up close and personal, you know, riding the spine type cutting, but just holding it in standard hammer grip, it is really something, really something. And it's about as good as I think you can design a handle. I just don't know, like even the paramilitary, which has got a great handle, like, it just feels so square and boxy after you have this in your hand. It is really, really well done. And uh, you know, it's worth experiencing for this handle alone. It is excellent. Another great thing is the pocket clip. I really do like this clip. Uh, I don't love it as much as the Spyderco clip because it is just a little bit flexible. So it feels like maybe if it snagged, it wouldn't just, it would probably just bend off and you'd have to like bend it back. Um, but yeah, it certainly seems like it's nice and deep and it just, 
it rides really well in your pocket and you know because the knife's flat at the top it really doesn't stick out at all so very very nice subtle knife to carry until we open it and it looks like a little Italian dagger so yeah the Viper Keeper it's two hundred dollars which is a fair bit of money I wouldn't say the I wouldn't say it's a good value knife but I wouldn't say it's a bad value knife it just kind of is it is what you pay for it um, the handle is something that you really need to hold and experience yourself I just think it's great the blade is absolutely fine. D2 steel is a good choice. No problems at all with that. I just think that there's a couple of little things about this particular one that I'm just not stoked on. I would rather not have the wave. I would probably rather not have the Quillions and the dagger. This would just be an amazing knife with just like a flipper tab and nothing at the back. That would just be such a good looking knife. Um, but you know, it is how they made it and that's fine. And it is made really, really well. If you get one without the centering issue, I think you would almost have just a really almost perfect example of why European knives and knives from other places that aren't America and aren't sort of tactical and that sort of thing are still really, really relevant to experience, uh, especially if you're a bit of a knife collector and like to season your tastes just a little bit. Thanks for watching my review, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.